Real 92.3, LA's new home for hip-hop is standard oh. for racism and racial injustice in the black and brown community, big boys big neighborhood. Boys. This one right here, this is a pleasure to have these brothers in the neighborhood, man. Dog Pound Gangsters up in here, D- hey. DPGC. Yeah. We got Daz in the neighborhood, and I'm like, Daz, hey. we, book. What? we gotta what? talk about what? it. And Daz was like, hold on, man, we got corrupt. <laughs> Daz and corrupt in the neighborhood. First off, man, Daz, how you holding up, bro, through through this whole pandemic situation, bro? Oh yeah, we holding up, we just having fun, staying in. I'm taking care of my mom, you know, she's 73 years old. Yes. You know, and uh, you know, I can't be selfish trying to go out here and party. I keep my same regimen if I was in California. Don't lock that. I heard, hey man, <laughs> and you in Georgia, bro. In Georgia, they 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 pretty much opened up, huh? Open up like a you you hear me? Yeah, hello. <laughs> like, hey, and, and all of them that's open up, you don't want to go in. So yeah, treat it like that. <laughs> and corrupt man, welcome back to the neighborhood. Your damn self, man. How you been holding up through this whole this whole pandemic situation? Oh, I just stay out the way. Yeah, man. Keep myself out the way, man. You know what I'm saying? And uh, concentrate on this music. Me and Dad's working on these projects. I'm over at my brother Roscoe's house right now. Man, up, Roscoe, man? another legendary. What up, boy? Oh, hey, yeah. man. Remember that time we were in Japan and we were freestyling and I <laughs> killed you and Roscoe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, oh, hey, but, yeah. but, but what's crazy, you know, and, and time heals everything, but Dad's, he was like, <laughs> hey, big. Cause don't ever let that get back to Daz that you murdered me and Roscoe freestyle. <laughs> don't tell, don't tell Daz because he'll he'll never let it he'll he'll never let it go. But you know what? With, with time, man, all all wounds heal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, how much are you guys missing performing together? You know, we don't have any shows. We don't get a chance to. Yeah. And you know, with with Dog Pound, I was pretty much seeing y'all a few times a year just on certain festivals and concerts and things like that. Daz, how does it feel not to be on that stage for this long? I mean, you know, I, I know all my lyrics. I, I get on stage like this, but me and Corrupt, we've been hanging together for the, since the pandemic started. You know what I'm saying? We've been together. He just came back to Los Angeles. He was out oh, here man. with me the whole time. So we've been working on dog food, too. You Hello. know what I'm saying? And hey, man. Uh, we, we got a new single out called Let's Roll. Hey, man, and, uh, Corrupt, are you missing that side of, like, not just creating, but performing what you guys create? Are you missing the stage? Oh, man, totally. Yeah. You know, it's it's killing me, but I'm riding it out, you know what I'm saying? Because the stage is my life, you know what I'm saying? So ain't nothing like when me and Daz is on the stage. When we on that stage, me and Daz, I feel like we flying, man. We like eagles, bald eagles. So it's like... You know, you just miss that drive because you know that's that's what I live for. I live for performing for the people. I live for rocking the mic. And when I look to the right and I yeah, see Daz, see I be forgetting my lyrics sometimes because I get caught up in the moment though. All you do, all yeah. you do is see corrupt eyes and they be like, <laughs> right. and that's, like hey. <laughs> that's when you know like like the struggle look, the bail me out look, like oh man. Like, well, I need somebody help. I'm you know, you know, I, just I, I get caught up in the the actual moment because mm-hmm. I'm just like, wow. Because I still be at a all. Oh, you see what I'm saying, big? Right. I still be like, wow. All these so people after get, all the I years, the, right? I get caught in the all crowd, the shows. Then I look at Daz, and then I get caught in like, like this is real. Mm-hmm. And I forget my lyrics. And it's I- crazy, man, that that doesn't go away. You know what I'm saying? Because right. it's been so many years, so many tours, so many stages, so many mics handed to you. And the same way with me being in radio, you know, for so many years, you still, when you say you're in awe, people don't understand that that feeling still lasts. Like when you walk out on a, to a crowd or when somebody asks for a picture, that feeling never, God willing, it never goes away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like how how beautiful that feeling is, man. And what I do want to talk about, Daz, is you put out a book, bro, that I've been yeah. telling everybody, man, it is really a one-day read. And that one-day read is because, bro, for one, you made it very easy for us. You got the pictures. You got the breakdown. But also, man, you can't put it down because there's been so many people that have told or tried to tell a West Coast life 
a dog yeah. pound life, a death row life. And and yeah. we never really get it from a person that's really lived it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody has an opinion. Why did you write the book DPG for Life, The Dog Pound? Because, you know, like you just said, everyone's trying to come out with the story and it's blocking us from coming out with our own story and everyone's doing videos and all that. So I just figured out, I made a script, which was yeah. Dog Pound for Life. Cause I had talked to Ice Cube one day we was in the trailer just hanging out. He was telling me about straight out of Compton. And he like, y'all next, like this. So I just took it, you know, my mind yeah. started, I started writing the script and putting it together, going to Corrupt, going to Rage, going to RBS, going to everybody, getting the story, putting it together, wrote it down as a script. So <laughs> instead of me begging somebody to say, can y'all give me the money to shoot this movie? I just took the words in the script, made a book out of it. And if, if we could press our own record, we could press our own book. Hey man, and I love that you took charge of it as well, man. And when I was reading it, when I first got into it, I was like, man, I said, it reads like a movie. And then it as you're going movie. through it, you're like, yeah, it, yeah it, it, it is a movie. How much of this is Hollywood? You know how they say, man, we had to bend the truth just a little bit. Or how much of this is, you know, just 100%. And not 100% because you lived it. You know how that sometimes yeah. you got to twist a little bit. Is there is there yeah. a cinematic twist to it? Ain't no cinematic twist. Everything in that book is real because that's the first volume. We still got 30 more years worth of stories. So it's a series. This is just an eye opener. We're gonna come out with more series books which explains more detail of what we're doing because we're still here. Ariel just got out of jail. I'm gonna write yeah, about man. that. That's why my last book, you know what I'm saying? And uh, on how I really started. And I got another book that I just written too. So, you know, the speed's out. <laughs> <laughs> And hey, that trailer is on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? So you can check this movie out. The trailer is on YouTube right now. You can check it out. It speeds out. Because every movie deserves a book, which is made out of a book that turns into a movie. Hey, man, you know what I do love about that, too, when you say everything in there, man? Now, as a fan first, there's things that we know. And then as yeah. a person that get a chance to kind of peek behind the curtain, then I know certain things. You know what I'm saying? But there's Most also definitely. pro dad <laughs> and corrupt that I didn't know. Hey man, when you say the Suge and RBX, the locker room thing that I see in the book, yeah, yeah. did that did that happen? That most definitely happened. Hey RBX man, RBX always tell that story. So I will never have to ask another question on if anything in the book is real. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. when I seen that, I was like, oh okay. Did you steal the equipment? Das, bro. <laughs> das. Well, how many times? How many times I broke into Solar Big Griffey Studio? What do you mean? That's how we made dog food. You made in the studio the iconic the dog food album off of breaking into the studio Dad's and stealing the dad the would hot wire the, the elevator. He knew how to hot wire the elevator. <laughs> we <get> to open <laughs> up and we go up to the whoop wop and get in there because. Hey, we want studio time too. This is before we was even, you know, we, we just made the dog pound. Damn. So we would, dads would do, they say corrupt, man. Cause we stayed off of Franklin at, at Snoopy's at the dog pound. So dad'd be like, man, I'm, I'm finna go to, so I'm finna go to Solo. I'm finna go to the Wuba. I'd be like, come on, let's go. And dad, that's the key. Delmar's the key, man. Cause dad's gonna let me know it's time to go. Time to roll. And, then and bam, you would literally go to Solar, hot wire the elevator, and really go into the studio and, and, and bring the equipment out. Dad knew, no. And, that, that, no I first still gotta, that, and then Dad would take the reels and the equipment. <laughs> See, because Dick Griffey got mad because I was taping over, uh, you know, the whiskers. <laughs> I was taping over the- Over classics. <laughs> I was taping over all his classics and was complaining. They, Hey, this is my master boy, to the whispers. This guy is no. <laughs> he was taping over the whispers. And, and, hey man, and it's crazy that he classic taped over so a classic to make a classic, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what about VIP in Long Beach? The iconic VIP records in Long Beach. Did you yeah, take? I grew the, up in there. But did you take the turntables or take equipment from there too? <laughs> the iconic. <laughs> Shout out to the Calvin Anderson, yeah. <laughs> he used to take me, he used to let me take the trash out. 
and I would always throw a turntable in a box and throw it in the trash. And I and I had a pyramid, you know, I had a pyramid mixer. Mixer, yeah. And I had two technique turntables. You know how much them cost. But yes, he had sir. racks up. I used to just throw them in there and I used to take all my turntables and go to the rec park and DJ up there every weekend. Hey man, let me tell you, for those and people know how iconic. VIP Long Beach is, you know what I'm saying? For, exactly. for, for, for not just y'all, but what it felt for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. I had never heard that story, Daz, until I cracked open the pages of the book. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had never seen that shared anywhere. And I was like, man, this dude built a legacy off of stolen yeah. equipment. <laughs> you know, like built a legacy. I made the whole Dog Pound album with a, a Juno 106 keyboard I took from Dick Griffey. I still got that. It got eight keys missing off of it. Hey, man, but you know what? Made a classic, though. Made a classic. classic. Trust classic. that, man. Hey, what about certain things, Dad? Like, you know how there's positions where there were so many of y'all together and corrupt y'all with Lynn, you know, like, oh, put this right here or put, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a family affair. Are there yeah. songs that you had your hand in as a producer that you didn't get producing credits for, Daz? Serial Killer, Ain't No Fun, Little Ghetto Boy, High Power. I was just getting drum programmer then. And then I went in there and when I started making Doggy Styles, when I made All My Niggas and My Bitches, that's when I got my credit because the song was already done without anybody. You know what I mean? And then I had learned the drum machine from Warren G and learned how to take what I got from the drum machine to take from Dr. Dre. Mm. And so, you know what I'm saying? I got a part probably in there where me and Snoop got into it one time and he forgetting shot my about, equipment up. Forgetting about the day the Woop Wop took over, you you did the scratching. Oh yeah, I did scratching on there and EQ'd all that. And then I had one part in the book where me and Snoop got into it one night and he went in and shot my equipment up. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> hey, Dad, you put that in this book? That's in my next one. Oh, there it is. I'm about to say it because I know I read this one. You know, I was like, man, I know yeah, I didn't skip over out. nothing. Him and, hey, him Daz, and did you? Him and Dog got into it, and Snoop said, okay. Went out the room, came back in with the pit, with the heater, and just said, pop, 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 pop. Just lit his equipment up. Dad said, <gasps> No, you didn't. He said, yes, I did. Man, he, shot, he took a gun and shot up the equipment that y'all were producing off of? I had him in a little head like, like this. He couldn't get out. Man, you ain't had him in no head. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Did you have anything to do with What's My Name, Daz? Uh, nope, I was oh, trying okay. to get on that song, but they let Corrupt in on the last one. What's your name, fool? Yeah, what's your name, fool? Hey, hey, look, when Dr. Dre and Snoop said, Corrupt, you go do that. I was like, for real? I said, wow, I'm finna be a star. Like, I'm in. This is it. Oh, hey, man, what was your then introduction? We shooting the video. I said, oh, my God, I'm finna be a star. I said, Daz, we made it. <laughs> yeah, just off of that. Hey man, corrupt. What was your introduction to Death Row? Um, I went to the picnic. It was the picnic uh, in the valley, I think it was. And uh, you know, me and Snoop already battled each other and became friends. So uh, when I went to the picnic, as I'm walking through there, me and Broomy, rest in peace, Broomfield. And then um, I looked to the left, I saw a dog. I already knew who he was from the door and I ain't seen him in a year. And I'm like, yeah, there go Snoop. You know what I'm saying? I only, met, I only met him once at that time. And I was like, that's Snoop. Went straight over there to him and I just posted on the gate where he was and it was over from that point. Man, did, did, did you, did you, do anything that day you did was it was it a freestyle circle was it you know what i'm saying like do, of course they knew that the talent was there but was it like a one day no-brainer like man did, he needs to be on death row no i had to earn it Shook said uh it was bj's birthday party so we went to dr dre's house because we was at the park so we went to dr dre's house and then basically you know because dog told dr dre and Shug like 
this this youngster right here is cracking. Mm-hmm. He's from LA and he's cracking. So Suge said, okay, well, you know, check this out. Do a birthday rap for BJ. If you, you know, if, 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 you, if you're not tight, <clears throat> We gonna throw your little ass in the pool. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, you you left with you, hey, you left hey, with hey, 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 big, hey big, you know what, I'm <laughs> what happens if I'm tight though? He said, "Welcome to death row. You'll get a you got a record deal." I said, "What? Check this out! Wham! Hello." Doctor Dre was like, "Oh, Shook said, Death Row, we number one." <laughs> and dog just sat back and was like, "Told you, hey, what were the early days, days of Death Row? You know what I'm saying? We read about the camaraderie, you know, of, co- of course, the craziness that everybody talk about. But what were those early days like when y'all were creating? The early days we was riding through Hollywood. Dr. Dre just left NWA. We was looking for all the NWA members. Wow. We used to ride around Hollywood. We going to all you know. That's when all that's when Larry Parkers was jumping off." Oh yeah. yes, sir. Larry Parkers. And uh, you know what that seemed that seemed was like. So you know, around that time and breaking in the studio, stealing our food in the morning, going to the store, five niggas in an apartment, calling a homie L 187 211 on the pager beeper to bring us two bags of weed. We didn't have no phone. All we had to do was go hit 911. <laughs> That's it. 187 211. Bam. All the people pulling up at the house. Hey, man. Like, see, that's because that was uh because that's when uh deep cover was in effect. So we hit everybody oh. with the one. Oh man. Wow, they knew what it was. It ain't mean murder. We just had the hottest record in the game at the time. So we would hit people with the 187, 211. Bang. That was it. And then, you know, Daz and Lil Style and them wake up in the morning. We all just walk to the to the store. And Daz and them steal the milk, steal the eggs. Oh. <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. We were starving while Dr. Drayden was in the starving. mountains party. They had we parties had every it. night. We couldn't we had go to the party. And then we snuck out there one night and just crashed the party. Right. Yeah. Hey, man. Party too. What was great about being on death row? That we could do what we wanted to do. And what does that mean, Daz? What does that mean? I mean, you know, we can go in the studio anytime, unlimited this, you know what I'm saying? And I, I shit, Dr. Dre from NWA. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Imagine being in our young age and Dr. Dre from NWA. That's it for me. And then they drop you know deep I mean? cover. Oh, yeah. Number one record in the game. And this is our family and team. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's amazing. And Suge, he literally would let us do whatever we wanted to do. Hey, Me and man. Dad would break in though at night because Dr. Dre and Snoop was the focus. So, you know what I'm saying? We had to earn ours. So we would just, doc, so Snoop, uh, uh, Dad would break in so we could work on our music. And that's how we got Suge interested mm-hmm. in our, our project and in us. And then we did, you know. Uh, Cause don't give a fuck on the soundtrack. Yeah, for Poetic Justice, as the dog pound. That's when me and Daz made the group and, and Dr. Dre, Suge and Snoop, they loved it. So, you know, we said, we got the dog pound, which is the homies, but me and Daz is going to be the dog pound. We represent the homies. Mm-hmm. See, now, that story go, that, that, that story go like this. Me and Corrupt was getting fucked up one night. And we looked <laughs> at it, we looked at each other and we looked up at the moon. And when we came back down, we said, we gonna be the dog pound. Dog. That's where we lived at, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then the next day we made, niggas don't give a fuck and the rest was history as a group. Because Amen. before, you know, we was, that nigga dads and Corrupted Kingpin as inmates on that first Chronic album. Hey man, did y'all know that y'all were building something special, not just for yourselves, but for the world? Man, we was just trying to get a record out. We was just trying to rap. We didn't know what the future hold for us. We was just being young, wild kids exploring. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know if it was going to be legendary. You know what I'm saying? And you know, and then we, you know, we met Tupac, and you know, it was just all these people was out before us. You know what I'm saying? Right. You was on, all we you know was is on the all radio. We knew, all we knew 
was man, this is Dr. Dre. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. This is Dr. Dre. Hey man, you know how when you want to get on or you like, man, this is Dr. Dre. Was it sometimes harder than what y'all thought? Like, man, Dre send you back to the booth. Or you know what I'm saying, like waiting your turn to record. Was it a little harder than what y'all thought? He'll fire your ass in a minute. As soon as you go in there, you better you better ah, deliver. You here? Ah, get your ass out of the booth. Next ah. person, let me see what you got. And he he go through the line like that, but he'll fire your ass in a minute. Off and the Dr. Dre, once he hits you with this one, remember this dance. Once Dr. Dre hits you with the buddy. Oh, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Hey, hey. Hey, do cor hey, corrupt, what was it again? Buddy. <laughs> hey, Amen. <laughs> but there was also a friendly competition, too. It had to be where if it's like, man, I don't want to get a buddy and I don't want to be called out the booth. You know what I'm you saying? Better believe it. You better, you better deliver. And that was the thing, because you know, when we did the chronic, the only there was only two people signed in death row. That was uh Rage mm. and Snoop. And Snoop. All the rest of us was unsigned. Damn. So well, Dr. Was, Dre was and Suge was basically seeing who they want to sign next. So they actually used the chronic as a blueprint for signing artists. You know what? Let's see. If you if if the if the people love you, you got a record deal if you make it. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you know, good luck. Beat it. And Hopefully you as won't you can see, good old fashioned ass whooping. So, you know what I'm saying? We all mate. Nate Dog never signed, though. Huh, Dad? Right. Nate, Nate Dog never signed. But as you see in the book, I got the first death row contract in there. Yep. So you can look and see what the content of that whole deal was. We signed for $5,000. Yeah, I thought I was head. rich. Yeah, man. Hey, Dad. So bought a ham bone. <laughs> I bought a hair bone from the slaughter swap meet and it turned green in two days. <laughs> hey man, Daz, why was it important to put the actual actual printed contract in the book, DPG for Life, the dog pound? I want everybody to know the content of a deal. So always watch out for these type of deals like this. And that's a classic contract right there. That's when we first signed because it only had Suge name on it. It didn't have Interscope. It didn't have none of that type of stuff on there. This was a Suge Knight contract that we signed for $5,000 when the chronic came out. Damn. And at that time, man, you're, you're possibly thinking like Corrupt was like, I'm rich, you know, and then you think, you, man, I'm part of something. I'm No, I'm part of something good. We're going to be taken care of. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is one of the biggest labels not on the west coast but in the world that y'all were creating you know so the, you know you never know time, you, you never know you're making history because mm -hmm. you're making it me and daz because when i first met daz i mean all we cared about was making music we really didn't think about anything yeah. else huh daz and you and you yeah. so young you know what i'm saying and, and everything is a first time and the tuition into the school of experience that y'all paid was a mighty tuition though. Right. Yeah, but the fact is though, when the chronic came out, didn't nobody know our faces. They only heard the music. So when we walking in the street, thousands of cars riding by playing the chronic and looking at us like, fuck y'all looking at. Yeah. We right. Like, I was in Inglewood. I'm in Inglewood going down Van Ness. Pull up at the light Century Boulevard, Van Ness and Century in Inglewood. Nigga pulled on the side of me and he looked at me. He playing stranded on death row. Mm -hmm. He looking at me. I looked at him and I'm just, I'm just, I'm at an awe. I'm like. But he didn't, like, he didn't know that that was corrupt, huh? Right. He said, what you looking at, blood? Yeah. Me and my. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just looking at him like, what's up? What's up? He banging my, he banging me right then and there. And then he just looked at me and he boned out. I said, wow. He was like, man, we got to start shooting some videos too, man. We, <laughs> man, we, man, we shot our, I was like, I'm going to uh, video video make this right so I don't get yeah. shot. Yeah. <laughs> and next thing you know, doggy style. No, hey, I'm on there. What's your name, the fool? They know my face now. Right. 
Right, and yeah. what's my name? Dads, because we was all in it. I looked at Dad and said, we, we finna be stars, cuz. Hey man, how fun was that? You know what I'm saying? Not having to ask for, for drink, not having to ask for smoke, not having to ask for, you know, females. Like, y'all, they, they gave you guys the key, the key to the world, not the palace. How fun yeah. was that? It was real oh, fun, you know. Yeah, had a ball. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck gave dad this Astro van, right? <laughs> he gave me a van with no license. I had no license. He gave me an Astro van with a stash spot in there. When you touch the seatbelt, hit the button on the seatbelt, then the amp turns into a stash spot and pop out. Bam! Yeah. And he was like, ooh, we in the game right You're like, now. we made it. <laughs> How old was and you, I'm Delmar? I was 17. I was driving with school right. one time. I, I hit the chronic like this. That's when chronic first came out. I passed out uh, on the driver's seat going, you know that turn going on the 101 from the 405 when you're yes. going in? I man, passed that, out. Bam! They grabbed the wheel. Ah. <laughs> hey man, that's that's a hard turn if you ain't smoking. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so so from going from the, the great times, bro, when you when you there and you know, you're being celebrated. Everybody knows y'all. Y'all, y'all made the the West Coast and the West Side worldwide even more so. From you know, guys that was putting us on beforehand as well. But then, when did y'all started to see like this turn, either in Death Row or whatever, where you was like, man, this this is not as fun right now. And what was it? Like right in the middle of like when Tupac came there because Tupac got into it with corrupt. Cause he told corrupt, let's I'm, I'm, let's go into this hotel room, me and you, and we gonna squab it out. And Nate Dog came and said, I don't know why everybody think we gonna fight and be friends after that. And then I got up to say, you know what? I'll take that. I'll take that face. I'll fight you. Know? I'll fight you right now. <laughs> right. So so, Dad, you told Pac, I'll fight you right now. Yeah. Right. And then he said, I can't go nowhere without my outlaws. And that was the beginning of you know, this and that and that and this, because he was trying to be like on a military mind thing, like you corrupt and everybody, me and Snoop is the general, y'all come to us if y'all want some money and I tell should. I'm like, well, I gotta do all that when I'm already talking to should. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, so, so that was a, it, was, it was like Pac was trying to do, it, it was almost like a rank, like whatever the problem is, you come to me. Mind, yeah. Right. Military. And I'm like, uh-uh, we're not going for that, man. After the Snoop thing at the airport, I mean, you know, the New York situation, then it just really got dog pound versus death row. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we stopped doing everything for death row. You know what I'm saying? And then Tupac got killed. And then it just all went down. Everybody just got scandalous after that. Hey, Daz, were you instrumental in any way with bringing Pac to death row? Or yeah, he was our friend. He was our friend, you know, from Poetic Justice on to now. You know, we yeah. hung with him. We used to watch laser discs with him. You know, he, <laughs> he gave us he gave us juice on a laser disc. You know how big that was. And then, you know, Pac came to Death Row in 1994 when we did the Murder Was the Case soundtrack. That's when I did that song Hard on a Nigga. Mm -hmm. So that was on Gang Related, but we paid him 30000 If you look in the movie, we yeah. still came in and gave him that money. That's the song that I did with him. I told him, we're going to pay you because Pac was getting $2,500, $3,000 a song. We came in there and gave him 30 Gs. Then. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, he, and we didn't even use the song. And so when when it's time for Pac to come home, how how much in either Shug's ear or somebody else's ear where you guys were like, man, I think he should be on death row? Or was it a no-brainer? I think that was Snoopy. I think Snoop's the one. Dog. Sure. Yeah, Snoop, that, but we was all involved with it because I was the producer. I was producing the song. Me and Snoop used to talk about it all the time. You know what I'm saying? So Snoop made the choice to go talk to Suge. I backed him up, and you know what I'm saying? And that's when I came with Ambitions of a Rider. Mm. I ain't mad at you. Mm. Got my mind made up. Mm. Scandalous. It ain't nothing but a gangsta party. Yeah, you know, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, he ain't bragging. We just talking about it. He ain't bragging. He just talking about it. Hey, so man, when you say from real life, though, that's real life. You can't brag about real life because Delmar, 
Jazz never talks about it. I, I know, I man. It feels big boy. I'd be like, you gotta let these people know your accomplishments, though. I'd be you like, screw up, stop embarrassing me. Right. I'd be telling them, stop embarrassing me, telling people that stuff, man. But you know like, what, though, man? <laughs> it, it, and it's crazy, bro, because there are times when it, sometimes you got to tell people what they don't know. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't about, you know, being double jointed and, you know, satisfying yourself. It's like, nah, bro, like, we, we you, you're a part of our history. We've pressed play many a times on what y'all created, bro. So I, I definitely love it. I love it, man. So let me ask you, when, when, what was the relationship like when, when y'all say, you know what, man, that was kind of like the downfall or, or the end of us being like these death row. It was this against this. What was y'all relationship with Pac when Pac was shot and by the time Pac passed? Was there any dialogue, any communication? There was no communication with us. We was just praying for the homie to make sure yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then we was looking out for ourselves because the war was on. We didn't know what was going on. You know what I'm saying? And then Suge was playing, you know, this and that and it just went haywire. You know, it all folded out how it is, how you see on the media. You know what I'm saying? And uh, the, the, the point of position was we was trying to live. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah exactly. Because there was man. a lot of people getting killed and you know, that's why I was putting out so many records and stuff like that, because you never know. Your last impression is your last record. Hey man, when you when you fast forward to where you guys are now, and we talk about, you know, producing movies, yeah. merch, you know what I'm saying? Merchandise.com, books, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's that? Not that next thing, because there's always something. You know what I'm saying? Where's where's Dog Pound at today first as a group? Brothers, yeah, we ain't corrupt. We ain't gonna never stop loving each other. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's me, him, dog, and that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? That we're gonna keep this thing going on, and just more whatever God plans for us to do, we're gonna do it. I always go with my first instinct when I do things. If some click in my head, like when I made the book, I was smoking in my car. Nipsey Hussle came to me and said, popped in my dream and put them in my window like, what's up, nigga? I'm like, what's up? He like, yeah, if I could sell a CD for a hundred, you could sell a book for a hundred. I'm yeah. out, popped out of my dream, bailed out, and I woke up and, and I was on a mission like that, you know, it's all about what they, what they call it, epiphany? Yeah, epiphany. Yeah, hey man, hey. did you always have a book in your head but you didn't know, Daz, that it was a book or did you always like, man, I need to write a book? It popped in my head when I was talking to Nipsey in my dream. Damn. And we was conversating, he was like, yeah, if I could do that, you could write a book. I don't, and it just a book came into my head and then I just got on my computer and start formatting. You know what I'm saying? I'm an experimental person. I like to get on things, get lost, retry again. Yeah, you man. Now the computer that you got on to create the book, did you purchase that or did you steal that like all the other stuff that you started <laughs> to, to create greatness? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I still got the computer I stole from that front. <laughs> <laughs> Man, but right. but now, right. and what about what about Dog Pound as a group? Corrupt, like what what goes on music wise? Daz is the key. Daz yeah. and all, you know what I'm saying? You know, Dog's the head of the horse. Daz is is the key to the game for me. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna let me know what direction we rolling, and I'm, I'm rolling. You know what I'm saying? I want see, the mic. You know what I'm saying? See, but see, like, as it's just he's the key to the game. He got the creativity. He got the music. He got his direction. I mean, that's stop it. You're embarrassing him. And he has the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. So, this, this is what we got. This is what we got planned. We're working on a new project called the Inmates, which is me, corrupt. RBX and Ray, it's gonna be on Death Row Records. You know what I'm saying? With the new E1 Death Row Records, we joint venture with them because we all coming to an agreement with things and this is gonna be our first record back on Death Row Records. Damn. Called the, called the Inmates, you know what I'm saying? So they the let us- The Inmates back on Death Row. Yeah, they letting us get in the vault to look at all the music that we got in there. And that's why I'm doing it because I wanna, you know, that's a lot of cherishable moments that I wrote yeah, on those yeah. tapes. I put the Cynthia on there, I put the tape on there, slicing that shit. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, so man. <laughs> hey, hey, corrupt. And you know that I can't sit here and not say what's happening to Roscoe, man. And Roscoe, bro, for one, you are one of those lyricists, or should I say one of those artists, that when I would write for you, you would recite what I write <laughs> like it was your own. You know what I'm saying? And for that, people call you one of the dopest MCs, one of the dopest lyricists, one of the most slept on. And it ain't about my ghost writing. It's about not the ghost writer, <laughs> it's the reciter. So I want to give you uh, give you yours as a reciter. Of a <laughs> of a king ghost writer, the way that you would recite my shit, I appreciate the help, man. You know what I mean. I, need, I gotta get somewhere somehow. Yeah, it. man. You know what I'm saying. And I love that we getting it. You know, we getting all this realness out here. The realness from y'all, <laughs> and then some of the jokes from me. But no, Roscoe, I got I got to talk to you, bro. We like, what, let me tell you, man. Now, at one point, we meet this young, young mustache this young motherfucker as as e40 would say this young mustache yeah and it's crazy because we had already fucked with corrupt so much you know what i'm saying and corrupt was instrumental and he was already footed in being a lyricist and yeah. then you get roscoe and you're like oh man that's that's corrupt's brother and for one a lot of stuff don't run in the bloodline bro that ran in the bloodline. Yeah. Did you they born did, on the same day? Did you know yeah. that we were expecting for you to come under corrupt your bro a certain way? Was there a pressure the way that we held corrupt up that you had to like, man, there's a pressure on me that other people don't have? The pressure was how he held me up. Oh that yeah. Because he gonna say. Yeah, man, my brother's the greatest and he'll serve anybody in this room right now. We're in a room full of people I ain't never seen before. I'm like, all right, well, let's go. <laughs> I got to serve him. I'll be in the middle. We were shooting girls off pause and I'm shooting the pool scene and uh, and uh, Nate Dogg is shooting a, a different scene while I'm shooting the pool scene. And then they called me outside. They said, Corrupt wants you in the parking lot. So I go to the parking lot and Eastwood was out there and Corrupt was like, man, serve this nigga right now. And I'm like, man, that's Eastwood. Man. I just <laughs> this my homies. I mean, now serve this nigga right now. I'm like, okay, well then here we go. So we start going back and forth. And we wasn't even back and forth. He went, he spit something, but he had already said that shit before when we was chilling in the trailer and I heard it. So then when he spit it in the battle, and I'm like, man, you know, you. You gotta, you still a written rapper. You need to change your pamper. I just heard you spit that freestyle in the camper. Boom, it's over. It's like, but that's, that's <laughs> we, do, we do real freestyle. You know what I mean? So that's really I, that that's what played the biggest part was the real freestyle. Hey man, what what's going on with Roscoe the artist today? Man, I'm just, you know, I'm working, I'm chilling, but I'm I, I got my family, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm I got kids and stuff, you know. It's a lot going on, so it's time to stay close to your kids. Yeah, man. Pandemic, but uh, before all that, I was working on like I'm still working on actually a, uh, a movie called Philifornia for uh, yes, sir. Scheduled for 2023. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. to, that'll be 20 years since I dropped the first album, Philifornia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, hey, man. Let me tell you, bro. If if and thank God that we're here together. But you got to think, man. There's a lot of calendars right now between us <laughs> there's a lot of memories there's yeah. a lot of great shows and then away from us knowing each other there's a lot of great memories just for me as a fan you know what i'm saying yeah. as, as a person like and that's why bro like y'all represented the west coast so well worldwide and you guys know man we've we've been places together you know here yeah. and and you know and getting our passport stamped but what y'all did for Hip hop and what y'all did for the West Coast, everywhere, bro. Because you got to think, man. At one point, the way that we dressed, it was it was ridiculous. It was that gangster shit. Y'all wear khakis, y'all. Man, why y'all don't keep y'all cars on the ground? Why you fucking your cars up? <laughs> in it? You know what I'm saying? Why you crease your pants? We heard it all, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then when you look, man, shit's been mimicked 
all compliment it, mimic whatever you want to say all over the Copy. world. Copy whatever all over the world though, man. We've been in Japan and they banged out in Japan. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, like 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 dads, you got a clothing line. You selling shit that would have got all of us murdered years ago, but now people can rock that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't you ever go to your dpgforlife.com and grab me one of them outfits and send it to me. <laughs> Dance, I, I you, am. You make some clothing, bro, that I'm like, bro, we couldn't have worn this back in the day. <laughs> you, and the one Damn, that you oh, no. the one that you showing, oh yeah, it may be like the black, the like, but I've seen some where I'm like, Daz, stop it. <laughs> like, <laughs> but no, it's been it's been a hell of influence <laughs> all over the world, man. And we gotta continue to say, man, when it comes to Daz, corrupt, Roscoe, when we say veteran. That doesn't mean anything crazy. And Forty told me, he said, man, we veterans and relevant at the same damn time. Uh, well, yeah. that's, that's what it is, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. I'm going to tell you straight up, man, when we get back in the room, we're going to do this again, God willing, and forever and a day. But I tell you, man, like, Daz, for those out there, y'all need to grab the book. We thought we For knew sure. a lot, and it's not like some expose tell all. Oh, I'm just scared, but we thought we knew, and then when you get the when you get the words from the person that lived it, that's why I couldn't put this book down, bro. And I read Thank the you. book in one day, one swipe because I couldn't put it down. You know what I'm Thank saying? And, it love, and what I love about it, Daz, is told in your language. When I heard it, <laughs> I heard Daz. When you have a corrupt line, I heard corrupt. When you would say yeah. Snoopy said, I'd heard dog. When it was yeah. Nate Warren, you know, when Warren didn't get his, his death row jacket, I felt that. You know what I'm saying? I heard Warren saying what was in the book. He, he was at the airport. We were supposed to go on tour. He had his bags and everything. You ain't on death row. Who told him that? He cried like a monkey. Somebody told, and and I think Warren said, did he leave the airport? He was crying. He was hurt. He was hurt. We was hurt too. You know what I'm saying? Hey man, did he leave the airport that day? Because what y'all were going on tour, right, or doing some shows? Our first show was in Chicago with the Ghetto Boys. And when he said, when Suge said, "You're not on death row to Warren G," did that mean he had to leave the airport, or did he go with y'all? He never, they didn't have no ticket for him. Damn. I remember Warren telling me that story, bro. And Damn. then he signed a Def Jam. Took off, <laughs> you know? Hey, man. Yeah, you got to love it, bro. <laughs> you got to love it. Hey, man, is there hey, anything? Thing, I'll tell you another thing, too. Big Go ahead, corrupt. You know, Suge wouldn't let us really rock with anybody else. He would never clear the records. So we on the low. Wrote records for Warren G. <laughs> for, Do you see what I, I see? see. Wrote Corrupt wrote that record, that whole record. Oh, yeah. Listen to, Warren G, listen to Warren G rap that song, and you can hear Corrupt, every verse Corrupt write, you can hear Corrupt voice in Warren G. And then Dog did his first single, which was this DJ. Wow. And this DJ, Warren G. That's it's new. Snoopy voice. Now listen to that whole song, and you can hear Snoop voice as Warren G when you hear that song. When I hear that song, I think about Snoop. That's all I hear, guys. Hey, hey, man, and y'all would have to kind of sneak that under the radar without credit and everything, just homie love. We just gave it to you. Make that shit happen. On Def Jam, so we felt we want to support him. We know that Simon ain't going to clear a goddamn thing. Pardon my French. (laughs) So we just... We just gave it to G-Dub. We just wrote the records, did the records for him. He laid them. <clears throat> and then those are yours, Warren. Go have a ball. Because we was doing great. We're number one. Yeah. Death Row. So we doing great. Death Row! Death Row! <laughs> what a brother know. So we just gave him to G-Dub, man, you know, and let G-Dub shine. Be the same. Amen. Have y'all had any communication with Suge since he's been locked up? Yeah. 
Yeah, I talked to him. I talked to him like a couple months ago when I was in Miami shooting my video for uh, for Gotti Montana. Oh, and wow. I talked to him but when his spirits was up, you know. I had to ask Corrupt because he said- Ask about everybody. What'd you so say, Dan? Corrupt said, yeah. should ask about him. I had to stop. Stop, Paul Jigger. What? Huh? Yes, he did. He asked about me, even though we going through what we went through and fuck you and shooting all the type of shit we've been going through. I never would thought that. He asked about, asked about, asked about, asked about Snoop, about of course. You know what I'm saying? And, and I was like, I told Daz, and he's like, what? What? <laughs> Hey man, but there also, man, are some, you know, there's moments where it's like, damn, but there also are some great unforgettable moments with Death Row and some great unforgettable moments that included Suge as well, right? Suge was like, no, I'll, be honest. I'll be honest, Suge, Suge changed like my life. There. He changed my life. Yeah, he changed you know? my life. Suge was like our stepfather, like our father. We looked up to Suge for everything, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. As, as far as us being 17, 16 years old, should have took that father role in our life. And that's what hurt it so bad when it all ended. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was it make you want to just kill each other. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But Because there's so much love there, too. You, you, you get the most hurt by the person that you love. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a different layer of hurt. But by yeah. the grace of God, we never got to that point of hurting each other. And we, and we never crossed paths for that. You might hear all that rah-rah shit and all that shit and other people getting it and getting got, but we never ran into each other. Maybe it was the grace of God that we it never was. ran into each other. Yeah, it was. Definitely so, man. Definitely. Hey, bro, we just had a scare with Dr. Dre. Brain yeah. aneurysm, you know what I'm saying? And what, where were you guys at when y'all first, and I don't mean I was on the couch, but like mentally when you heard that uh that Dr. Dre went down. Where were you, what what did that feel like, Daz? I was asleep. Somebody woke me up with a text saying Dr. Dre had an aneurysm, and I was like, you know, I was praying that he make it through. You know what I'm saying? Because that means a lot was on his brain, and mm -hmm. you know, just stressing. You know what I'm saying? But I know Dr. Dre is a strong individual, and you know he's gonna come through this, and he made it through with prayers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, man. Hey, what are we gonna do without the doc, man? That's our teacher. That's our brother. You know, I, everything. You know what I'm saying? So, corrupt is more in tune with him. More, I haven't seen Doctor. You know, Doctor Drake since like the Chronic, but I still love him the same way. You know what I'm saying? You say you haven't seen Dre since the Chronic. I mean, work with him. You know, I've seen him yeah. here, here, there. But as far as work with him, I haven't worked with him since the Chronic. Wow. Man, and what about you, Corrupt, when you first get that, man, like the, the news about about Dre, how does that hit you? You know, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Death is all around us, big boy. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Nip is gone. You know what I'm saying? And um, my big homie Crazy Tunes is gone. Mm -hmm. Groomfield is gone. So, you know, it's just like, wow, Dr. Dre. Debo gone, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right, Debo's gone, you know what I'm saying? Took away Zeus. Yep, Kobe, like, you, you know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, the conversations we would have. And it's like, but I'm just know, glad like, that oh, Dr. Dre's yeah. in the whoop wop. It's scary, I tell you the real, you know, it's pretty scary, man, because it can happen to any one of us. And I was just, like Dad said, just praying for him, you know, we just pray that, uh, you know, that people aren't next, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause they're so close to home, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, wow, man. And like I said before, it's good that me, you, big boy, and everyone else that we come across still got that genuine love for each other. They yeah, pick man. up the phone, call each other, say I love you. Yeah. Thinking about you. Yeah. Here's something that we got going on, you know what I'm saying? And just, we've been friends for, our whole career, big boy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and y'all been solid with me my entire career. You know what I'm saying? You was on the radio before, you, you was on the radio before we was even rapping. You know what? No, nah, because I was, even with What's My Name, I remember I had a 78 Cadillac with, I had no insurance. 
<laughs> Stash spots. I remember that, that man, but I came on radio in 94. You know what I'm saying? So when I came on radio in 94, I'm just coming from the career. I never had a job in my life. None of that sh- stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's a- that's the time that we came out because then nobody even know who we was till yeah. 94. Yeah, so when I see and I see what's bubbling with, you know, of course, deep cover and, you know, the, the uh, doggy style. I was on the road with the far side when when that came out. So I'm seeing this thing that's coming and then yeah. to get in and actually press play for the first time on what y'all created to press yeah. play. <laughs> tell me nothing, bro. Tell me nothing. <laughs> hey, man, I do want to ask you guys, man, did y'all receive any flack or any uh, backlash from when y'all came out as Dog Pound and saying, you know, we Dog Pound gangsters and we're uh, supporters of Donald Trump? Did y'all have any problems with the community, with Daz, with you being a Trump supporter and Corrupt being a tra- Trump supporter and Roscoe being a Trump supporter? Never. I was never I'm a Trump supporter. A Trump supporter. <laughs> Say it again. A Trump I never was a Trump supporter. I never yeah, I talked to Donald Trump. Trump right when we when he was smoking weed. <laughs> Wait, say what? Say what, corrupt? When he was smoking weed. We smoked weed with Donald. Dad's right, because you know, dog. He used to always invite Snoopy to his parties, and he used to, you know, hey Snoop, um, um, what's that you're smoking? Let me try some. Yeah. <laughs> This is really that's before Donald was that's before Donald was the president. We used to hang with him because he used to invite Snoop to parties and stuff like that. You know, the Donald. Then he got yeah. political and you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Then you, yeah, you definitely separate because he was a guest of mine. I used to enjoy having him on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But y'all corrupt. You smoke with Donald Trump? Snoopy, me, Daz. I love him. it. You know, I love Trump it. Got the hey, man, we, did he? we be shocked. And then you know. When he became president, I said, I'm voting for Kanye West. Right. <laughs> hey, man, did he ever have a conversation with y'all, man, where it was like, kind of like, where the bitch is at? You damn right. Yeah. He was like, hey, man, so check this out, right? He was like, yeah, so Snoop, you know, I want to introduce y'all to some of my friends, you know, some of my friends. This is Wanda. This is Wanda. Hey, y'all come on in here. This is Snoop. Dad. This is Corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> that was the same day. Dog, well, hey, dog, dog would only be like, don't touch me. <laughs> right. right. Don't, he said, don't what? Don't touch me? Don't touch me. <sighs> that was the same day. That was the same day. We oh, smoked out Michael Jackson, too. Michael Jackson don't was in me. the next room with us. We blow so much smoke in there. He invited, he, he walk in and tell dog, let me hit that. And he said, I'm just playing. And we all busted out laughing because it was just so much smoke. <laughs> this is Michael Jackson. Jackson. Michael Jackson. Hey, First man. Of all, I ain't never seen dog go crazy over anybody, really. But he said, wait, that's Michael Jackson. Dog said, pew. And we all just follow him. Y'all keep up with Snoop, because Snoop will leave you. So, you know, we get there, there's so much smoke everywhere. Michael said, hey, Snoop, let me hit you. I'm just playing. Oh, I love it. <laughs> hey, man, and you know what's crazy? People probably listening to that like, nah, man, because I was with Michael Jackson one day, and the shit that he laughed at, or right. the shit we talked about, I was like, bro, this can't get out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, this motherfucker Wait, laughing at shit. That. Yeah, I'm like this motherfucker laughing at shit. Hey man, but Louis said that they say that Trump don't drink. Had y'all ever seen Trump drink? Man, Trump was wasted. What? Yeah. No, he was. Daz, he was wasted. He come down. You know, they, wasted. They well, maybe wasted. that was just the weed he was smoking from Snoop. I don't know, but he looked wasted to me. I tell you that. But uh-huh. hey, white man wasted. You know, hey, <laughs> Let's blame it on the dope. <laughs> Man, I want to thank y'all for coming into the neighborhood, hanging out with us, man. Once again, pleasure having y'all in the neighborhood. Yeah. Roscoe, thank you, brother. And it's crazy because it's crazy to see Roscoe here because it couldn't have been two, three days ago. I went down my Roscoe, like, rabbit hole. You know yeah. what I'm saying? When you start going through shit on YouTube, right. and you know what I'm uh, saying, for some reason, and not to even know, Roscoe, that you was going to pop up today, bro. But I got this other thing, man, that I want to talk with y'all about where I really want to highlight. 
and I really want to talk to y'all. But that's something that I want to share with y'all off air. Roscoe, right. pleasure to see you, man. I love you, big. Love you, homie. And we're going to continue to build. Corrupt, love you, my brother. I will What's see up? you soon. If not, I'll have to see you in Zoom. And like Daz, us. thank you, bro. <laughs> thank you for the book. Also, I ordered. Thank you, man, for the autograph inside. Thank you for yeah. the post that you put up. But first of all, man, with DPG for Life, the Dog Pound, thank you for writing the book and sharing your story with yeah. us because you guys have shared so many <clears throat> moments of your music. We and also we have a film, big boy. We also have a film that, that Daz is working on attached with that particular book. Amen. I, I got can't. my album Transition coming with HMG. I got a single out right now called Premonition. You know, it's speaking on something real because, you know, I'm 48 years old. So, you know, I'm, I'm a, it's, it's time for a change in music. Changing. He's music. almost 50. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, you yeah, know, I mean, that game, real life, you know what I'm saying? And, and also, I got my next single finna come with Wiz Khalifa. You know what I'm saying? Worldwide. So, you know, me and Daz is just working real hard. And we got the, the uh, Dog Food 2 album with our first Woot Wop out right now. You know that's what I'm saying? Right. That's what hurts about not being able to get on the road. Because yeah, it's man. great to be able to be on the stage and perform these records for the people. But Daz has a plan. I told you Daz is the key. He has a plan about doing something that we can stream. You know what I'm saying? Where we can... Um, we can uh, like do our own concert. Yeah, yeah, man. Stream it. You see, Hell yeah. and and do it that way. So Daz is putting that together as well. So get ready for that DPG stream where we gonna probably be doing the records from Dog Food. We are gonna do the whole album. You know what I'm saying, man. And don't say probably, things. bro. Don't say probably. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just do that shit. Daz, yeah. Corrupt, Roscoe, thank you, gentlemen, for being in the neighborhood, man. I tell the people that can me at Ricardo underscore DPG. You understand me? Because I just got a, a new Instagram because I got hacked by this hack. <laughs> right. <laughs> and what's, what, what's, the new, what's the new IG? It's at R-I-C-C-A-R-D-O underscore D-P-Jizzle. There it is right there, man, y'all. Y'all continue to hang with us, Big Boys Neighborhood.